every battle is won with wisdom. And I used to love what this Robert Schuler said. He would say, we need to play it down when there's drama, play it down and pray it up. Play it down and pray it up. So there is concern, but God gives us wisdom to deal with these matters. So no matter what the matter is that you face today, a health issue, challenge with your son, your daughter, no matter what you're facing, you can war with wisdom and wisdom will get you to the places you need to be. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of the None of Your Business podcast. You got uh, Sean and Lacey here, just like we are each and every week. And if you're watching us on videos, you can see um, we're using a different uh, streaming Format. platform mm -hmm. today, so we can't even surprise you. Surprise! Look, <laughs> it's Tim's story. <laughs> what's up, Tim? Thanks for being on the None of Your Business podcast. I love this idea, but how'd you guys come up with None of Your Business well, that's the name also of our book. Our book is also called None of Your Business. Um, you know, our, our mantra, our charge in life is to help service providers, people that provide a service to the world to fall in love with the idea of being an entrepreneur. So, you know, you have to, you have to embrace the idea that you're in a business. If you're going to reach people with your um, healing arts, with your music arts, with your painting or your, your, your actual yes. arts. Um, and so it's going to take marketing sales and it's going to take mindset, which is also too, one of the things I wanted to, um, jump into, but first we always start every podcast with this question and you I already know the answer from you because I've seen you in the past, but tell us how, because look, you've done great things, huge things in your life. And it's easy for people to maybe look you up online and be like, well, that's because Tim is, you know, privileged or Tim has benefits or advantages that I don't have. Maybe it's because Tim's mom is best friends with Oprah Winfrey. So of course, <laughs> that's how he, that's how he got to where he is. Tell us your creation story. Who's Tim's story and how did we end up talking to you today? I think for, you know, all of us, I think we're all, you know, born with this eternal spark. And uh, so I think that I align myself with it. Because, you know, as a, as a kid, I, like other kids, had dreams of doing something in life. You know, if you, if you see baseball, you want to be a baseball player. Mm -hmm. If you see a good movie, you want to be that guy. Um, so I had all that. But I think that I aligned myself with what I call like an eternal spark, where I started to really believe that I was created to do something that was wonderful that I could pull off. Because uh, I think that people really get uh, so caught up with what other people are doing. Mm. And I just wanted to do what I was called to do. And so I was fortunate enough to have a very strong mother, Latin mother, who trained us well. And the whole idea was to never do anything halfway. So I never did my homework halfway, never cleaned my room halfway. And so I think that she really discipled me to uh, help find my path. I love that. There was a story you told about working in the restaurant and uh, the lessons you learned there. Tell us about that. Yeah, you know, uh, I wanted to work because I'm the youngest of five. And I saw my uh, three older sisters and my older brother. Uh, they all started jobs at 16. And I saw that they were making money. <laughs> And so I went to work for Mr. Anderson washing dishes. And I'll never forget, Mr. Anderson said, Tim, why do you wash dishes with such passion? And I said, it's just the way I was, I was taught to do things. So I, I'll never forget whether I was a dishwasher or a busboy. You guys, I gave it everything I had. 
And it wasn't because I was even trying to like move up the ladder. It's just because it was the way I was taught. And that same mindset is very much with me today. You know, um, I think what's been on my heart a lot lately as I see what's going on in the world and working with a lot of entrepreneurs and service providers that are big givers, um, it's, it weighs on them a bit. And you talk about this idea of passion and that that everything you did, you did it from a place of passion and purpose. What kind of advice do you have for people that when their external environment puts so much pressure on them, it causes their flame to get douse down that passion to not be so ignited. Cause you know, you got to have passion to be able to get out there and share your message and reach a lot of people. But what if the world is weighing on you and you allow that to happen and you lose your passion? How, how can they be helped? What are your thoughts on that? That's actually a great question. And I, I feel like if we use the metaphor of, let's say if somebody has to move from a big house, so if they have a five bedroom house, that's going to be a lot of furniture. Okay. Mm -hmm. We got the five bedroom house, then we have the garage. So you're not going to do a very good job if you only have two movers. Uh, but if you, if you get, let's say even seven movers, but they're efficient and proficient, you can do a really good job and everybody just do the things they're supposed to do. Mm. This is where I think people are missing it. You know, we have, the war in Ukraine. We have the challenges of the pandemic and what's happened. We have a uh, challenges in the economy, the prices of gas. It's not any of our job to handle all five rooms. Mm. You're going to wear yourself out. You're going to get discouraged and it's not even going to work. You won't even be efficient. So we have to realize that it does take a village and just like when I got a chance to come and speak for you guys, I see that you're doing your part, but you're also mentoring your teams to do their part. Mm -hmm. So if I do what my purpose is and you two do what your purpose is, the move is going to be a lot easier. You mentioned this uh, challenges that we have in the world and probably one of the one that currently as we're speaking is affecting a lot of people is the economic challenges and a lot of noise can creep up around that and a lot of people start to get fearful they're they're afraid what if it doesn't fix what will happen to me um what words of advice do you have for people that are worrisome that, that are anxious um and that are allowing their thoughts to paralyze them, stop them from doing even the things they know that they need to do today to prepare for tomorrow, but they're so worried about tomorrow that they fail to even prepare for today. Yeah. So number one, I think that concern is not a terrible thing. So if somebody was to say, you know, in your neighborhood, they've been having people's houses have been robbed. Okay. I'm concerned. Then I got to figure out what to do about it. So when we talk about an uh, economy that is being challenged, when we look at a society that's even having a hard time finding baby formula, I mean, we never heard that one. Mm -hmm. So this concern is, is okay. But now, as you're saying, how do we respond to this concern? And the way we respond is with wisdom. Mm -hmm. Every battle is won with wisdom. And I used to love what this Robert Schuler said. He would say, we need to play it down when there's drama, play it down and pray it up. Play it down and pray it up. So there is concern, but God gives us wisdom to deal with these matters. So no matter what the matter is that you face today, a health issue, challenge with your son, your daughter, no matter what you're facing, you can war with wisdom and wisdom will get you to the places you need to be. That's a powerful statement. And that's one of the things that I've always subscribed to. In fact, we were talking about that this weekend is also, I mean, when you're in a place in a state of, of fear and you let your mind go into that and drive you into that emotional state of being, of being fearful, 
you do have to have wisdom to take you out of that space because otherwise your mind plays tricks on you. Right. And it can drive you down a hole that you don't want. So I love, I love that advice. And I, I hope that people that are listening out there, no matter what they have fear around, even if it's not what's going on in the world, maybe it's something in their own lives that they can utilize that to lift themselves up. That's yeah. And great. can I add something to that? Please. Because, um, you know, in, in the Bible, Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge. Mm. And I feel like when, when I was a kid, you know, we, we didn't, we didn't talk about like going to an amazing college. We, we just talked about like, you guys make sure you don't get in trouble. Mm-hmm. And then I'll, I'll never forget, there was a lot of talk about Social Security. <laughs> I used to hear about Social Security. I was six. <laughs> so my, my mother must have been like 36. And I was six hearing about how she's going to get Social Security and they're going to take care of her. Now, as you get older and you become more knowledgeable and learn facts and information, we realize we're really not as feeble as we thought we were. Mm. And so knowledge is power if it's applied the right way. Mm. Well, and that, and that's interesting, right? Because we also learn from our experience. So from social security, that was an experience that has stuck with you, right? For all yes. these years from six years old, but you've also had experiences that other people may not have been afforded, but what we're able to do is to transfer that knowledge, transfer that wisdom through mediums like this. And what are, so, so going through your life, you're working for Mr. Anderson. Um, how do we parlay that into <laughs> where you, what's, what's the bridge? What's the gap between yeah. Mr. Anderson and Tim's story today? Well, I think that, you know, in, in, in full transparency to think, to go from, you know, seven people in a two bedroom apartment, and then to live in Beverly Hills for 23 years in one of my houses, I had seven bathrooms and an elevator in the house. And my neighbor was Prince and Ben Affleck and the Osbournes. So where the Osbournes shot that show was right next to my house. Um, you know, that's surreal, to be honest, because I think you guys are getting to know me. That has never been the drive. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, some of our friends, they're buying islands. One of my buddies just bought a million dollar car. And I was happy two days ago to get the number one at Taco Bell. (laughs) (laughs) You guys, because, because, you know, I'm like you guys, we love health and nutrition, but man, I was just wanting the number one so bad. That's the real supreme in in the taco supreme. And so. For, for me, I, I'm God's allowing me to live a surreal life, but I, I'm really not caught up in this glitter thing. I I'm caught up with the cause, and that is to 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 live my life, to to be somebody that is abiding in the vine, abiding in God, and do what I'm supposed to do. And uh, and the other day was eating the number one at Taco Bell. <laughs> I love, I love caught, up, caught up in the cause. I really, that's super powerful. I'm right? caught up with the cause, you guys. I, yeah. I, I'm so caught up with the cause. Like I'm going from this, uh, I'm going to uh, a really cool restaurant in Beverly Hills right down the street with a very famous person that I work with on projects. But I'm just as happy sitting in this parking lot, dialoguing with, with, with you guys or before this, I was talking to my sister Paige about furniture because I need some new furniture for my house. I'm just caught up with life. I'm caught up with a cause, right? And I think you guys are too. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's, why, that's why we're attracted to you. That's why energetically we're on the same vibration and it makes communication, it makes collaboration easy to do when you can find people that are, that are in alignment. Let's talk about this, though. Then, then one of the things that I honestly struggle with, I all, am constantly seeking mentorship and guidance. And how do we handle when we run into people that are not in alignment? And you've been around plenty of people that you get around them and, 
and they're not to your level. And I know you, you first attempt to bring them up to your level, but sometimes yes. people can't come to that level and that makes things very difficult and uncomfortable. How do we deal with that? And I'll, I'll throw in the bonus round. And what if they're <laughs> in your family? Yeah. So, you know, that the, the most difficult thing in the bonus round is the family dynamic. Mm. Because when you have a growth mindset rather than a fixed mindset, and we see our uncles and our aunts and our relatives and maybe even our own mother and father, brothers and sisters with a fixed mindset. What I believe personally, there's times when you meet somebody, you need to hire your expectations. Mm -hmm. You need to say, huh, she used to be a gossip. Maybe she was like this. Looks like she's changed. She's done some work. I'm going to hire my expectations. There are some people we need to keep our expectations the same mm. because they have chosen to stay in a fixed mindset. Fixed mindset is that permanent place. And so the only thing we can do is be kind to them where they are, right? Be loving, be compassionate. But I think we're going to get exhausted if we think everybody wants to go on the same journey as us because they do not. And then, so when, when you run into them, you just be kind to them and then you continue your journey. 100% because what's taking place is that let's say, um, let's say we're in Hawaii and they say there's these beautiful falls, but it's an eight mile hike but there's these falls that are okay. They're only a mile away. <laughs> Most people are going for the mile falls. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, us three, we're going for the eight mile. Yeah, that's right. All the way. <laughs> so you, um, you have your book, The Miracle Mentality, because we're talking about mindset too, right? Yeah. And having a fixed mindset versus not. Tell us a little bit about what that means. And I, I think it, cause it's so applicable, especially with everything that's going on today. Tell us what that means and how people can get in that frame of mind. Yeah, thank you. You know, when you write a book, it's a interesting business now because I think that there's a lot of chatter in the, wor in the world. Yes. And I find that a lot of the chatter is information that came from the eighties, from Dennis Waitley, Og Mindano, and uh, Zig Ziglar and other greats that were there. And then I, I think a lot of the books I see today, um, they're, they're books from the 80s that somebody put their own little secret sauce. I'm very proud of this work, The Miracle Mentality, because it is very original. It's, it's, very, it's very me. And the idea comes from my background in church where I would hear about this thing called miracles. A miracle is something extraordinary, uncommon, not regular. So I came up with a phrase, you guys, that an utmost, an utmost God did not create almost children. Mm. So if God is utmost and he did all these amazing things they say that he did, which he did, why would he create me almost where I almost get a job. My all, life almost works out. <laughs> right. I almost get enough money. So, so what do I need to do? I need to align myself with that miracle mentality God. Everything God is about is miracle mentality. So this book, Miracle Mentality, is how to align yourself in the miracle mentality. Watch this. In your job. There's a whole chapter on this, your finances, your family, your faith, but also your visions and dreams. Very proud of this work. I worked hard. Yeah. And I hope that everybody will pick it up. Miracle mentality. You can get it everywhere. You're getting books off Amazon yeah. or anywhere. You can go into brick and mortar, go into Barnes and Noble, get you a copy of Miracle Mentality, read it. 
and then reach out to them. This is one of the things too, that I always say is that all the successful people that I've met say in the last maybe three years are super accessible. Um, they understand that this is a world where um, accessibility has been created through social media platforms, et cetera. And that's one of their best ways to share their gift. And so I encourage everybody to plug in. And speaking of plugging in, I want to know about the church part of Tim's story. Tell us about the the, the church that that you, that you're working with and through. Um, how does that come about, and how can people plug into that? Yeah, you know, for me, it's not it's not the way everybody came up, but for me, when you're living in a a, a family where there's a lot of crisis and chaos, you hopefully are looking for an oasis. And there was a family that took uh, my family that was in crisis. Uh, my father struggled with alcoholism. My mother struggled with a very strong temper. <laughs> and we had five <laughs> kids. So this family, uh, there was uh, Caucasian white people. They took us to a church. And uh, I'll never forget, it really helped my life. Like I would sit in Sunday school and they told me about Noah and the Ark and David and Goliath. And I really believed everything that these guys said. So church cooked me and the things of God hooked me. And so even though I'm doing a lot of projects that would consider be considered secular, you know, I coach big companies and I work with the NFL, I work with the NBA, I work with movie stars, man, I need church. Church, church life to me is my oasis. So we founded a church just six years ago called The Congregation. And it's very simple, congregation.family. It's a very small church. We only have 500 people that are part of the church because it's only six years old. But we have about uh, 2,500 that watch every week online. Mm. But it's a really cool community. It's very Bible-based. I'm the founder but we have other pastors that speak as well. But I like what we're doing. It's a sense of community and uh, it's it's building people's lives. Yeah, I've seen a lot of the stuff, the content that you're putting out with the church. Um, it's phenomenal. And I don't know where 500 is is small. I mean, because, because I guess now we have the mega churches, <laughs> but I mean, in a world where in the brick and mortar side, that's, that's a really good mm -hmm. uh, gathering of individuals who are inspired coming together. Um, and I'm sure it's only just, it's going to continue to go, grow congregation dot family. That's where you can find out and plug in. And, and even if you're not in the Southern California area, you can, yeah, watch, you can you watch can stream. every Sunday and Wednesday online. And, uh, you know what I love guys is a lot of our buddies that would never walk into a church. They watch me every Sunday, like guys that we both know mm -hmm. male and female. So that, that, that to me is cool. Cause I think the Jesus style of being a servant, uh, walking in love, walking in forgiveness is a, a very good life that's benefited you guys and your family and has benefited me and my family. Well, since we're on that topic, we're going to have a question that doesn't apply to everybody, but I think many people are inspired by this because you did mention, well, I do some work, you know, with these other other entities, whether it's corporations, big companies, people who are famous for a myriad of reasons and people who are not famous that are just struggling yeah. and dealing with issues. Um, but then you have this other side congregation, the congregation and, and your church. Um, I think a lot of people, and you, and you kind of mentioned it, like a lot of people that we know maybe would watch you know, online. How do you recommend for people that have that? Like we, when you were young, you were spoken to and you were like, yeah, I connected with that. A lot of people connect with that, but they have a hard time connecting the dots to string that back into their work. They want to, they want people to know that, you know, they are, are, are religious, spiritual, God believers, Jesus believers, biblical principle, but they have a hard time tying that in. Um, Speak to how people can do that and feel good about themselves and also to what has happened in the world where people would feel uncomfortable even about sharing those viewpoints with the rest of the world. Okay, I love the way you frame that question. So, you know, it has been said that the God that you know is the God that you'll show. 
And so we've all seen it in the mostly in the 80s, 90s of the angry preacher, the guy sweating and just like <laughs> very angry. <laughs> Even as a kid, because you see, I'm very happy go lucky. I'm like, is that guy okay? <laughs> he doesn't look right. <laughs> but but that's the God that guy knew. So the God you know is the God you show. So to me, I think sharing faith is many things. It's acts of compassion. It's acts of kindness. It's being the light and, and not even saying a word. I had a, I had a, a lady that was cleaning my room. I was at the uh, Fairmont Hotel in Santa Monica. I was there for three days about two weeks ago. And on the final day, this lady, she got emotional. And she said, I told my husband that I, there's a man that I clean his room. And I promise you, I think he's a saint because she's from the Catholic church. And I, I did not say one word to her about God the whole time. I would always tip her and I'd always ask her how she was doing. And then I would affirm her and say good things. But I never said one word about God. She said, I told my husband there is something godlike about him that is healing my soul. Mm. And then I then told her uh, that I'm a man of God, that I'm close to God and that God has a call on her life and that she's going to be okay. I said, I could, I could see you're struggling as a human and as a, another human, I just wanted to just be caring to you. So that's the God I know. So therefore that's the God that I was able to show. Love it. Uh, that that's an amazing story. I, so one of the things, uh, this is kind of a little bit off topic. I'm thinking about so many people today are consumed with thinking ahead, thinking of their future. We talk about this a lot. They're, they're consumed about thinking of their future self and they have a hard time thinking of their present self. And like what your story brings up for me is like you were being present in that moment in order to be aware of that other individual that may be suffering. Yes. How, do you help, how do you help people get out of being so consumed with what is to be instead of what is? Yeah, uh, another great question. You know, in our society, we have become um, human doings, as you've heard, mm -hmm. instead of human beings. So yesterday I had this observation. I was at this glamorous store called Target. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a there was a, a couple there with a really cute little baby in a stroller the baby did not talk but the mother was really tending over the baby and playing with the baby baby did not talk so the baby is not getting giving them a lot of feedback they're not having great conversations with the baby the the, the baby has not joined uh, AYSO soccer. Uh, the baby's not in ballet classes. It's just a baby at Target, <laughs> right? In a stroller. And I, and I sat there and I thought about it. You have to be patient when you're a parent because they're going to go from just being there with that baby, feeding, burping. It, it takes a while before there's that real connection, right? Where the, where the child just starts to develop in dialogue with you. Mm. I think we're very impatient with our lives. Mm. And it, it takes a while to develop. To be little Timmy story from Compton, to be the, the kid who worked for Mr. Anderson, and then to be uh, the guy that now gets to influence a lot of people. Woo! Took a lot of time, took a lot of burping, feeding, <laughs> falling, <laughs> getting back up, education. But here I am. Couple of uh, couple of little rapid fires for you. What 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 was your what was your biggest in your mind, your biggest setback, your biggest fall? Divorce. Married into an amazing family. Um, my uh, father in law, double doctorate. Um, advisor to both Bush presidents, um, ex-wife, graduated USC, has her doctorate degree, college professor, 
try it hard, guys. Try it hard. Four years of therapy, just we, we both felt like we were living in a cold garage. A terrible thing because I really loved her as a person. I think that she really loved me as a person. And uh, it just it just didn't work. And, you know, I think that was the first time I gave people a chance to really um, pile on. Like as boys, people used to play this game where they'd pile on. Because before, I was pretty much the, the, the kid that people just liked. You know, I was happy, funny, wasn't up to bad stuff. Finally, people had a reason to say, oh, really? You know, he's very successful, but couldn't keep his marriage. Caused a lot of guilt, a lot of shame, and uh, took him about 10 years to come back from it. But after, after knowing her all these years, we're best friends. And after being divorced about 15 years, about three years ago, I said to her, we get along so well. Do you think we should get back together? She said, <laughs> No. <laughs> That's a great she goes, story. <laughs> she goes, you're my favorite ex-husband. She goes, I don't like your life. I like quiet. That's right. <laughs> and then what's next for Tim's story? What are you, what are you seeing on the horizon for you? Um, I, I, I love my present. I love the present uh, place where God has positioned me to serve. Uh, this coming week i'm doing a big thing in bel-air um with people from entertainment industry financial gurus people from all walks of life it's called tim story live then we stream it on facebook we get over three hundred thousand people that will watch um i love what i'm able to do in airports as you guys know i'm in 90 airports of the world uh every single day starting a new talk show in the airports but more than like projects uh, I'm glad that I'm fully present, fully feeling, and fully alive. I'm alive in my life, and thank you for the gift, God. That's how I feel. Thank you for the gift. And this episode will air after the fact, so we're going to find out how good you are, Celtics or Warriors. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm going to tell you that the, <laughs> that the Warriors are going to win because the Celtics are tough. They have great defense, but when they get nervous, they rely on one guy, Tatum, but Tatum's still young. He's under 25. But uh, the Steph Curry and the rest of the guys, oh, they're going to they're <laughs> gonna come. So it, it's going to go six or seven games, but I'm taking Warriors in six or seven. Love it. Tim, I know, I know we got to let you go. I want to thank you so much for spending some time with us. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm glad we're friends. And I look forward to hanging out more. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, folks, that's it for this episode of the None of Your Business podcast. Be sure to tune in next week. We'll be back again with a brand new episode. Sean and Lacey here helping you to reach even more people, make an even bigger impact and to create the lifestyle that you deserve.